Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 2 to the power x multiplied by 27 to the power x over x plus 2 equals 6 and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's do a quick introduction first. So we have this expression and we're going to try to find the x value. Obviously, guess and check is a good method. If that works, if there are any trivial solutions, you can try to find them. Let's go ahead and factor what's on the right hand side. And I'm going to write the 27 as 3 to the third power so that I can work with prime numbers such as 2 and 3. And I'm going to write the 6 as 2 times 3. And after using properties of exponents, this turns into 3 to the power 3x over x plus 2 equals 2 times 3. Now, at this point, can I go ahead and safely say that this should equal this and this should equal that? Can we do this? Maybe. But here's the thing. We're going to put this in a nicer form so we can, we can say for sure what is going on, okay? Definitely, you can compare both sides like this, but is it always going to work? Probably not. So let's go ahead and put this in a nicer form. First, I'll take it from here. I'll divide both sides by 2. That'll give me 2 to the power x divided by 2. And I'll divide the 3 by 3 to the power 3x over x plus 2. So in other words, I'm going to put the 2s on one side and then 3s on the other side. Left hand side and right hand side. Makes sense? And again, properties of exponents help us here. Division means these are first powers, first of all. And division means you're going to subtract the exponents, right? So this is going to turn into 2 to the power x minus 1. And this one is going to turn into 3 to the power 1 minus. Be careful about the order because in subtraction order matters. It's not commutative. Commutativity does not apply. Whatever. Such a weird word. Anyways, so can we simplify this a little bit more? I mean, we should be able to, right? On the right hand side, make a common denominator. That will be x plus 2 over x plus 2, so minus 3x, divided by x plus 2. And if you try to write in the simplest form, it's going to be 3 to the power x minus 3x plus 2 all over x plus 2. At this point, you may not see what is going on. That's perfectly fine. But here's what I would like you to do. Factor the numerator. Why not the denominator? You'll see in a little bit why. You don't want denominator to be 0, do you? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and do this. Factor a negative 2 out of the numerator. Inside, you're going to have x minus 1, and the denominator will be the same. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see what I see? Hopefully, x minus 1 and x minus 1. So in other words, we can go ahead and use the fact that they both have x minus 1 in the exponent. We can definitely use logs, but I want to do it a little differently, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, notice that x equals 1 works because 2 to the power 0 equals 3 to the power 0. They're both equal to 1, right? That's good. Okay, so what about that? We got x equals 1. Is that the only solution? Well, we already knew that, right? Probably at the beginning you kind of guessed and checked. And when you compared these two expressions, actually, 2 to the x equals 2 implies x equals 1, and then x equals 1 satisfies the other equation. It's not always like that, but in this case special case, right? The equations are both satisfied by the same x value. Of course, they have to be the same. All right, so what are we doing? What are we going to do next? Let's go ahead and take this x equals 1 out of the picture so we can go ahead and just go behind the scenes. That's what's happening behind the scenes, okay? So be, to be able to do that, we're going to raise both sides. Assume first that x does not equal 1 because what we're about to do uh, kind of necessitates that. We're going to raise both sides to the power of 1 over x minus 1, and that'll actually eliminate x plus 1, okay? Because you can go ahead and cross-cancel this one and this one, and this one and this one. Notice that they're multiplied, right? Cool, cool. Now, we have a variable. Should we put that on the left-hand side? Maybe. I don't know. Let's do it. We get 3 from here to the power, I need some room for the powers, negative 2 over x plus 2 
equals 2. How simple, right? From a complicated equation, first, we find one of the solutions, which is kind of obvious, and then we go for the second one, but notice that this equation is a lot simpler, right? A single base and a single result. Good, not a product. So how do we go from here? We can use logs at this point. I mean, I need to use logs, it's inevitable, right? So here's what we're gonna do. You can you choose any base you want, but I'm gonna use the natural log. Some people call it log, but I call it ln for natural log. So now we can go ahead and ln both sides. The properties of logs tells us, bring this to the front and multiply by ln three, which is the base equals ln two. I don't think we need parentheses. I just wanted to show you that we are lning both sides. That's why. Most of the time I don't use with numbers. Even with variables, I just write L and X as if it's three letters. It is three letters anyways, but X is the argument. Makes sense? But if it's L and 2X, I'm not gonna write it like this. I'm usually, most of the time, gonna write it like this. Makes sense? Some people even say, oh, you have to write X in parentheses, blah, blah. It's not understood. It's understood, come on. It is understood, most of the time. Maybe all of the time. So, from here, where do we go? We try to isolate X, but if you divide both sides by ln3, you're gonna have a reciprocal. You don't want that, do you? So I'm gonna instead go ahead and multiply like this. Multiply by x plus two, so you can kind of linearize it. And then divide both sides by ln2, which makes a lot more sense, right? Now ln2 is eliminated, we end up with x plus two, which is easy to handle. All you have to do is subtract two from both sides. So we're gonna get x plus two equals this. Let me rewrite it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract two from both sides. Two is gone, now that's x. But if you make a common denominator, you will get negative two ln three minus two ln two all over ln two. And also notice that this can be taken out ln three plus ln two from properties of logarithms again, ln a plus ln b is ln a b. So the sum turns into a product and this gives us negative two ln six divided by ln2. And by using change of base formula, oh my hand, there's a lot of formulas you have to memorize, but well, I was able to memorize them, so can you, right? Why not? So because of uh, the two being at the bottom, when we write it with the change of base, it should look like this, log six with base two. So two should go here and six should go here. That's the rule, make sense? Easy to remember if you look at some numerical examples, Obviously, it's a lot easier to understand. So that is the answer, and there's more than one way to write it. You can use a calculator if you need a numerical answer. So what? That's it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method, because I think second method is going to be pretty interesting. Now, here's what we're going to do. First of all, this is equal to 6. I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides at the very beginning, because why not, right? Do I need parentheses? Probably not. Now this is a product, ln of a product turns into the sum of two ln, so it's gonna be ln two to the x plus ln 27 to the power x over x plus two equals ln six. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use properties of logs one more time, move the exponents, and that's gonna be x ln two plus x over x plus two ln 27 equals ln six. Awesome, what are we gonna do? Multiply everything by x plus two, because you definitely want to eliminate all the fractions, right? You want to make it linear as much as possible. But guess what? It's not going to be linear. When you multiply, it's going to be x squared plus 2x multiplied by ln2. x plus 2 is going to cancel out. You're going to get x times ln27. And on the right-hand side, x plus 2 will be multiplied by ln6. You get the idea? Now, here's what happens. We get a quadratic from here because of x squared. Quadratic in x because ln is not a variable, it's, uh, those are constants, right? These are constants, cool. Now let's go ahead and distribute, we get ln2 multiplied by x squared, that's gonna be the coefficient of x squared, and then we get two ln2 multiplied by x, and then plus ln27 multiplied by x, and then minus ln6 multiplied by x, and finally minus two ln6 equals zero. I just put these on the left-hand side, negated them, so I put their negations, okay? Now we can go ahead and organize this a little bit, maybe put the ln2 in parentheses, that kind of looks more like a coefficient. 
And then here, uh, you can kind of add, subtract the coefficients of x to ln2 plus, uh, by the way, this can be written as 3 ln3 because 27 is 3 to the third power minus ln6. This is going to be the coefficient of x and our constant term is going to be 2 ln6. What does this call for? The quadratic formula. Yay. But well, let's go ahead and find delta first. You know what? ln6 can be written as ln3 plus ln2. So this co coefficient will simplify a little bit more. And then you can use delta or quadratic formula. And guess what? You should be able to find the exact same solutions. Please check it out because I'm about to end the video because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.